Welcome to another episode of Mike Out. This episode is about how to backtrack to a position in the terrain with nothing but a compass, a piece of paper and a pencil. I've seen uh, many presentations about backtracking with a compass that are fairly complicated, requiring you to calculate back azimuths, and I find any kind of math in the field to be uh, a recipe for failure, actually. So, uh, it doesn't have to be that complicated. Backtracking doesn't require you to do any math. So, the method I'm going to present here doesn't require any calculation and you're going to be able to backtrack a set of waypoints to the position where you started. So in order to do this uh, and any kind of backtracking uh, you would need a compass similar to something like this with a rotating bezel that has uh, marked degrees on it. If you wanted to go in a single direction, uh, a single bearing or a single azimuth, I will use azimuth and bearing interchangeably because unless you're in the US Army azimuth and bearing is the same thing. You wouldn't need a notebook or a pencil. You would set your compass and you would turn your bezel ring uh, on your compass and uh, put the, the uh, red, or in this case the orange needle, in the red part, in the shed, red in the shed as, as they say. Then you would just walk. In order to go back the same distance you would have to measure that distance somehow and uh, the easiest way to do that is to count your steps and uh, an even easier method is to only count one uh, of your foot's step. Uh, in my case I would count my left step so every uh, every step I take would be one added to the count. Now if I'm only going one waypoint, one direction, uh, I'm hopefully going to remember that pace count so uh, I can reverse it on the way back. In order to go back to where you came from, you don't have to uh, do any calculations, you just uh, turn the, the compass around, so to speak. Uh, and instead of putting the red in the shed, you put the southern part of the needle, or the white part of the needle, in the red shed. So, uh, the only thing you need to uh, remember is uh, to put the southern part of the needle in the red shed instead of how you normally would do it. And that way you get the back azimuth. So where does the notebook enter the picture? Well, let's assume that we want to go back to this position. Uh, let's assume that this is our campsite or another position uh, where you want to go back to and you want to explore the area. Uh, what, when you normally explore an area, you probably don't want to uh, just go in one direction and then go back again. You could obviously go one direction and then go back again, and then from your campsite go another direction and then go back again. But let's make this more complicated. If uh, you're going out somewhere, and uh, by some reason you would want to change direction and go another direction, then you would have to uh, make a note of the bearing that you took when you went to the position where you want to change direction and you would make a note of that bearing in this case uh, 148 degrees so I'll put down 148 degrees and uh, when I want to change direction I also make a note of the pace count the number of uh, steps I took to get there. Let's assume that we want to go in this direction. We would obviously put uh, the red in the shed and head out there. But before we head out we could make a note of the bearing we're heading. So this happens to be uh, 318 degrees. 
So then I would make a note of 318 degrees. And for heading out, I would put the red in the shed and then go in that direction. And while I do this, I, I uh, count my paces. And when I reached a position where I want to change my direction, before I uh, do anything else, I would have to put down the pace count. Let's assume that uh, the pace is 50. The thing here is that if you would be running when you're pace counting, you would have to do the same when you're backtracking. You would have to run on your way back, otherwise your pace count will be off. You know, if you run, you have uh, a larger stride and if you walk you have a shorter stride so the pace count will uh, reflect the, uh, the pace you have so if you run you would have to run on your way back and if you walk you would have to walk on your way back so we reach another position and here we have all the data necessary to take our new bearing. Let's assume that we want to instead uh, go like that and uh, then we we shoot at some feature in this direction and we put the, uh, the red in the shed and then we get our new bearing and in this case it's 220 degrees so we put make a note of 220 degrees so that's our next waypoint so to speak and then we're heading in this direction for a while and after a while we decide that we want to change direction again and obviously I have my pace count because I've counted my steps going out before changing the direction I would put the new pace count uh, that it took to get to this waypoint. And now I'm set to uh, take another bearing. Maybe we head in that direction, which uh, uh, we set it up like that. So the red in the shed, and now we can read the amount of degrees we have to our next position. So that's 120 degrees. And then I make a note of 120 degrees, like so. And that's my third waypoint. So now I'm heading uh, in this direction, and after a while I decide that oh, it's time to go back. And then I make a note of uh, my pace count to this waypoint. Let's assume that uh, it's 80. Just like that. So when returning from this position I would obviously have to go in the reverse order so this is a azimuth I had when I went to this third waypoint and the position of the third waypoint is 80 steps from my previous waypoint so in this case I would have to go from this waypoint to that waypoint to this waypoint and when I'm here, or after 50 uh, paces, I would have returned to my initial starting position, if I've uh, done this accurately and correctly. So the back azimuth of this degree is obviously this. So in order to go back 120 degrees for 80 steps, I would put the southern part of uh, the needle in the red shed or have the northern arrow point to the southern marking on my compass and then I would simply just look at how many paces do I need to go to my second waypoint and that's 80 paces. So now I would use the compass like this and I would navigate with the uh, the southern part in the red shed and eventually I will reach to, to this waypoint and after I have counted my 80 paces I would have to put this waypoint in and 
Now I don't need to do any calculation, I just rotate it until the compass bezel says 220 degrees. And now I do not go in this direction. I have to remember to put the southern end of the needle in the red shed when I'm backtracking. And then I go to that in that direction. So this way I don't have to remember any calculation for getting the back estimate. Of course it's pretty easy on this compass, you would only take 40 there to get the back estimate. But this way you can put the same amount of degrees you had when you went out to the position on your compass, but you only put the southern part of the needle in the red shed. So then after counting and walking 100 steps I would arrive here and then I would have to put 318 degrees on my compass um, like so and then I would put the southern part of the needle in the red shed and head back and after 50 paces I would have returned to my starting position. That's it for this episode of Mike Out. I hope you found it useful and uh, please comment and please subscribe and Happy New Year! Until next time, this is Mike, out.